Hello my astrology friends, this is Lada from astrolada.com and these are your November 2023 video horoscopes for each of the 12 signs with an intro talking about the world events as well and I'm, I've been looking forward to talk about this month because there is something very important happening this month which is Mars and the Sun are joining together. This happens once every 2.2 years and as you'll see from my presentation, it actually determines some of the most important tasks and problems that humanity and the individual person will be working on for the next two and a half years after this conjunction. So we'll cover each of the signs and what it can mean for the world. Uh, and also another very good news that I have is that Saturn is turning direct. <laughs> and that's good news because certain karmic or complicated situations or situations that were stuck will start moving forward, will start unfolding, will start having resolutions. So this is exciting. Just before I start, I want to let you know that my 2024 video horoscopes, two and a half hours for each sign, are you can pre-order them already for 30 percent discount they will be released in november but anyone who pre-orders will get the 30 percent and you will be sent on the date of the release on the 17th of november your specific videos on uh, or bunch of videos ascendant sun and moon whatever you choose and also my 2023 astrology calendar which I've been doing for five years now and it's very successful with all transits for the year when planets become visible and visible, the meaning of all transits, the meaning of all uh, new moons and full moons, they're not specific for you, they're general, but you have like a calendar, it's the 100 and... Uh, 120 50 pages usually every year and it's interactive so you click on the date and it takes you to the meaning of that transit and the events that are happening then so you can plan your year ahead but now let's go to this saturn sorry mars sun conjunction first i'll speak a little bit about the world why is it so important because the sun mars conjunction shows where our biggest battles and fights and our biggest breakthroughs uh, uh, are happening for the next two and a half years. Let me just remind you, in 2019, towards the end, uh, the Sun and Mars met in Virgo. So what happened for the next two and a half years? Virgo is a sign of sickness, illness, taking care of your health. Well, we had a pandemic. All the efforts, which is Mars, of the world and all the bright minds, the Sun of the world were get, getting together to solve this issue or to mess it up or whatever so that's what happened to last time the time before last then the next 2021 towards october sun and mars met in libra and it meant that for the next two years till now the theme was very different it wasn't so that's when covid hysteria started dying out and the cases going down and the lockdown's going down, but the new set of problems appeared, which was Libra, to solve. So what happened? The Libra is one of the signs of peace uh, and war, or lack of peace. Then we had the eruption of the war in Ukraine. And what happened? Libra is about taking sides. Libra is about negotiations, is about treaties, is about diplomatic sanctions or diplomatic agreements. Well, all the world for two years and a half was focused on this Libra issue of, uh, uh, you know, and, and the world actually split into two factions, uh, you know, BRICS and the Western world. The Western world, which is more globalized, the globalists, as they call them, and BRICS, which they said, well, like, we don't want to follow the rules of this agenda. So the world split in two, literally in uh, Libra also rules business, trading agreements. Uh, you know, there was like such kind of rearrangements of alliances. So that was the hugest focus after that. And now we're coming for the next one. So what is the going to be the next set of problems? And you're seeing already the war in Ukraine is almost like out of everyone's mind. But you know where Mars and the Sun are going to meet now in November on the 18th. And we can feel it a month before that, like we started. They're going to meet in Scorpio. 
And Scorpio is not as forgiving sign as Libra. Scorpio is one of the most, can be one of the most devastating signs. It can be one of the most destructive signs. It's very profound as well. So Scorpio reveals truths, reveals hidden secrets, uh, brings to the surface everything that is dirty, the dirty skeletons, the dirty uh, laundry, as he says, of, of the world. All conspiracies, all anything that has been done on the closed doors, they will be a focus for the next two years. But Scorpio is a sign of war. Scorpio is a sign, and now we're talking that it's more dangerous one. And I pray to God it doesn't escalate to something more extreme. But Scorpio is a sign of terrorism, of war, of extreme hostilities. Libra, at least, there was some kind of negotiation there. There was some, they managed to piece, you know, the balance a little bit. It didn't spread like fire. When Scorpio and the Sun and Mars join in Scorpio, the next two, two and a half years can be under a lot of like extreme reactions, Scorpionic power struggles in the world, uh, rebellions, uh, it's physical violence as well. It's likely extreme hatred, extreme, but also it will show us two and a half years period of people doing extreme acts of heroism as well. There is the other spectrum of Scorpio and Scorpio can be, you know, uh, the destructive force, but also the resurrecting force, the, the extremely healing force. And they're meeting at the 25th degrees in Scorpio. And that's in tropical astrology is the sign Scorpio and in sidereal, your actual constellations. It's also the sign Scorpio. Uh, and uh, the sign Scorpio is basically, it. so both the constellation Scorpio and the sign Scorpio. So there is no, both astrologers, Western and Vedic agree. It's in the sign of the Scorpion, near the close of the Scorpion. It's actually in Vedic astrology, this lunar mansion we call it, is called Vishaka. And it's the, the lunar mansion of power. This is the most, one of the most powerful lunar mansions. And this star is the star, this lunar mansion is the lunar mansion of war as well, the warrior king. So, again, these are key words, warrior king. So, at the personal level, you become a warrior somewhere. And this warrior king, they describe Bishak as the most focused and concentrated power, horse with blinkers, nothing distracts you. You can't see others' opinion like Libra now. It's, it's like action. You straight, you charge, you don't care. You can trample others towards your goal. So collectively, the energy will be like that. Governments, people, like unapologetic, un, kind of almost ruthless energy. My son has his moon there when he's born. Anyone who has their moon around the last degrees of tropical, from the middle of tropical Scorpio towards the later ones, they are Vishaka focused, concentrated, obsessive quality, uh, which is fantastic for a person because these people can be so successful. This is the power, the, 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 the lunar structure of power and purpose. So whatever this conjunction is happening in your horoscope will cover the 12 signs. You would have unflinching obsession, passion, dedication to pursue something there, to wage a war against something, to overcome some issue uh, and you can even there is a saying that for this lunar nakshatra the ends justifies the means which is not true we have to be careful you know but with this so we have especially in the political world and collectively if people or rulers are acting that the end justifies the means imagine what things can happen scorpio rules uh, atomic energy as well scorpio rules uh, destruction, Scorpio rules uh, anything to do with poisoning, Scorpio rules anything to do with uh, death, massive death as a possibility. So we'll have to be very careful and by, and, and, but on a personal level, again, collectively, this is dangerous energy. Uh, collectively, it's where we have to pray. But when it comes to personal energy, often the individual uh, can transform this energy in a very positive way. As I said, purpose, focus, indiminishable um, ambition. 
this this Vishaka part of the Scorpio constellation and sign, this part of this, there's a, each sign is split into different lunar mansions. It's so purposeful, so ambitious. So you can do kind of a miracle, hero's work, uh, uncomparable achievements of willpower in that area of your life that the Mars and the Sun activates. I'm not saying already from November, but you have two and a half years to work on that. So we'll cover each of the 12 signs. But there is also a, a, a bit more danger because this Moon Mars, sorry, Sun Mars conjunction is opposite, which is very powerful aspect Uranus, and Uranus is very close to the star Algol, which is a star of revenge, a bit of a destruction. Uranus is very explosive, boom, 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 and you see what's happening already. As I said, astrological influences can start happening up to a month before, and explosions, everything. You know, um, even kind of destruction. There is Scorpio rules volcanoes as well. So think about such kind of Mar Uranus on Algo in Earth sign. Even the Earth shaking in a sense. Oh, that sounds so apocalyptic. But Scorpio is apocalyptic sign. Here is <laughs> representation of Scorpio behind me. The kids made it yesterday. <laughs> so all of those things are Scorpio. You know, <laughs> which is hellling, scary, spooky. Uh, but it's also the rebirth of the soul. It's uh, the soul, it's almost like the soul is thrown into the fire of a volcano, spun there and brought out purified and clean. Pure without all the dirt is burned off of it, all the muck, all the pain, all the trauma. It's traumatic for a bit, but then it's this resurrection light like a phoenix. So this can happen in your personal life over the next two and a half years in a certain area of your life. And... But because Uranus is involved, uh, I think the events will be sudden that happen. Uh, they will be powerful. They will shake us up and on a personal level as well. Uh, collectively, there will be a powerful involvement because Uranus is a social planet of fast trending, fast moving trends, viral trends and anything to do with very powerful uh, uh, coming together of people for a cause. So social movements of any sorts, and this will be shaky. This will, uh, but it's violent. I mean, Mars opposition Uranus and the Sun. The, the three planets are quite fiery, quite explosive, sudden as well. Things will be developing very fast. It, things are speeding up for the next two and a half years. We have a saving aspect to this conjunction of Sun and Mars. Those guys. This is Neptune. Is making an exact trine to the Sun. Mars conjunction at 25 degrees, Scorpio from 25 degrees, Libra, Pisces. So the trine is divine grace. Neptune is divine unconditional love, also divine grace. Pisces is, you know, the principles that teachers like Buddha and Christ taught us. Forgiveness, love your enemy. This, we're all one, embrace it from a higher perspective. What will help us? Uh, God's grace to alleviate those tensions, to alleviate things getting really destructive, this darker side of Scorpio, Neptune, prayers, people coming together in collective meditations, God's divine grace, just because God is graceful, God is loves us and gives us extra chances always. Uh, faith, faith knowing that there is a purpose and meaning for that. And of course, forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that is going to uh, possibly even solve those problems. Softer approach. On a personal level, again, prayer, having faith in higher power and, and knowing it's taking you somewhere. So this is about this conjunction. The other thing is Saturn is turning direct. But we'll look at this individually. individually. I wanted to look with you specifically about this uh, combination, how it will affect the world. And what we can expect for the next two and a half years, uh, and because of Uranus involved on all goal, that will be very active next year as well, the, the energy will get very shaky. And Uranus, and by the way, Scorpio and Taurus, because they're both on the axis of this conjunction, they're financial signs. Scorpio rules the banking industry, where you put mutual finances. Scorpio rules uh, hedge funds. Scorpio rules... Anything to do where many people gather their money at one place. Scorpio rules from the earth, the treasures underground. 
So that will be petrol, oil, anything that you dig out um, from underneath the ground. So these are resources underneath the ground. There can be some big focus on that in the next two and a half years. We already have that happening with Petra and so on, but I think it might escalate because of Scorpio. There might be some battle there because of such resources or some power stances and decisions taken because of that. Of course, Uranus is in Taurus. It's connected to the resources above the earth, food, wood, stones, all of those things. The prices basically of commodities is Taurus as well with Uranus there. So it's, it's a financial access, personal money, big money, uh, oligarch money, Scorpio. Taurus is the bounties of the earth and Taurus is the food that grows on earth. And so this is where I see the tension and the biggest change is happening. So the financial industry, the food industry as well, this access of food and finances where the focus of willpower, energy and having to solve problems, but of course also crisis because Mars has this energy of crisis and uh, something you have to battle for, something you have to put your energy like a soldier to fix, to improve. And hopefully, you know, but it's about two and a half year cycle. And I hope that this war that started in the Middle East and guess what? Middle East is ruled by Scorpio as well in ancient literature. And just like less than a month before that, we see before Mars Sun conjunction there, it's escalating. I really hope it doesn't escalate further, but it seems it's again going to be like a two year thing happening uh, that starts there and i hope it doesn't involve more of the world that's why this neptune maybe will be helping all right so that's it now let's look at each of the 12 signs capricorn sun moon arising november 2023 capricorn the month starts with good news for you saturn the planet that rules you is turning direct hey <laughs> it's been retrograde for the last five months and uh, it's been retrograde where in your third house so first of all generally when your planet turns direct you notice that the direction in your life starts shift as well almost like the karma especially if it's been heavier slower more difficult you would notice it won't be overnight because saturn takes like a whole month to take, turn direct they say it starts on the third 4th of November, but it still stays on the same degree the whole month. But you'll see this month a turnaround to a positive direction, easier direction, not necessarily positive, easier uh, direction. And things start happening with less effort or a bit slowly, slowly, they start moving forward instead of being stuck or instead of moving backwards. So whatever area in your life you're working on, it's you'll see gradual forward move of improvement and Saturn will be direct for the next seven eight months you know so you you creep because sat Capricorns always proceed slowly will creep slowly but consistently towards new territories and things will happen more according to expectations rather than you know uh, with delays or restrictions uh, but you're, you know, this happens every year, <laughs> but definitely you'll see turn around and especially in the area of life where Saturn is turning around and for you, which is the third house. So if you've had some delays or complications in some project, the business or commercial project, marketing or information project, anything to do with uh, branding or working in a small team environment with others, if you had some tensions or complications or delays, or if you're working on a website or a media project, anything that requires writing, speaking, or using your skills, whether your skills is IT or whether your skill is cooking and you're making videos for cooking, or whether your skill is uh, customer service on the phone, whatever your skill is, and if it's been kind of hard on you or uh, if if work in you know in any kind of requiring your extra skills and knowledge might have been more let's say such projects might have been going slower that starts turning around as well or communications might have been more laborious and difficult and even your social life might have been more on hold 
and more blocked, that starts changing again because third house is also social. If you had problems with uh, transportation or communication devices or some delays or some breakages or whatever, or some, they start improving again. Or if you are, uh, for example, if you felt unheard, if you felt uh, ignored in social environment, this again will start changing. Or if you had a problem with a friend or with siblings uh, or with relatives or with neighbors, this starts solving itself again when Saturn starts turning the right. There is some kind of resolution easing off. If you have problems with colleagues again, this starts easing off. Or if you've been working very hard on acquiring some new skill while well, Saturn was retrograde or in the previous months or years, now you're going to see when Saturn turns direct in your third house that it's becoming easier, that it's becoming automatic for you. So this is the reward of Saturn when it turns direct. Or if you've been working on some commercial project or whatever, business or intellectual learning a skill or using your mind and skills and or hands or brain, Behind, you know, if you've been doing some such kind of heavy work or taking courses or studying something, acquiring skill, now when Saturn turns direct, you'd see you become much more masterful. It's easier to you. So the reward from learning the skill. So that's another way it can play out. But yes, all those third house, social interactions, communications, travel, it's starting to move ahead. So if you've been working on some project for self-wealth, which means usually to make a business, Third house in ancient astrology is known the house of self-made wealth. So this two years, while well, Saturn is in your third house, some of you are making efforts towards self-made wealth, which comes through skills. In third, now we know it in Western astrology, the sky is the house of skills of how clever you are, your brain, what you've learned, <laughs> how the self-made wealth <laughs> you use your skills. You know. Um, so you might be working towards upgrading your skills, your knowledge back, or, you know, that's what Saturn requires for you for the next two years. And for really being more cautious of socially who you allow, using, uh, finding people that will be useful to you and collaborating with them rather than people that waste your energy, uh, who you give your energy to. So Saturn is working on this for the next two years, not just now, but, you know, you're becoming more, more, more aware of those matters. Um, but the other big event is that the Sun and Mars will join in your 11th house. It means that for the next two years, another social house is activated with all of your willpower. Actually, here things will develop much faster. Saturn works slowly. Again, it will take you two years, Saturn, in this third house and the Sun and Mars, two years to complete whatever project you'll be doing there. But it's it definitely things move faster there and sun and mars and you'll be victorious you'll be successful at that but sun and mars they can mobilize your energy towards some new long-term goal and dream this is the house of long-term goal or dreams so you can almost like with warrior like passion and precision with warrior like obsession remember it's happening in scorpio the most obsessive sign in the constellation of the triumphant arc where warriors return triumphant after war that you go after with this willpower and determination and focus and undivided attention towards some long-term goal you can achieve by the end of this two-year period some or over the next two-year period at some time some title and honor some rec i don't know phd or doctor or i don't know some award i i remember when there was marson uh, conjunction into the uh, 11 from my moon I think it was I gained the YouTube honor <laughs> you know on award you know it is some kind of an award possibly you can be working really hard with all your willpower towards achieving some goal some target as well you know it's very ambitious house the 11th house in Mars and Sun is a great combination there to have but it's almost like war like um, willpower you have to use in that direction, but you'll succeed. It also 11th house is gains and 
financial gains, so you might be working and mobilizing all your forces into a bigger salary, for example, for a bonus, not just in November, but for the next two years, or to reach more clients, or to reach more audience, or to spread some message or information that's important for you, mobilizing all energy in that, because the 11 house rules all of those things, or to spread all your, to, to, to contribute something to society. You might be mobilizing your energy to contribute to some cause or to some group uh, of like-minded people, even to participate in some social movements, movements of, uh, that are connected to changing the world, bringing awareness to others, or you might be making a project that you're spreading out and you put all your focus because you think it will help society and it's going to be viral. And you're going to have a very good grasp on what it is and what does society need to go towards it, what are the trends, and to immediately go after them, Sun Mars, its initiative. You go and grasp it. If you get an opportunity to participate with more people in something, I don't know, it's something like, like, you know, like Lyft Uber or some other social economic experiment or project, uh, do it because there will be some big opportunity there that, you know, you can get involved for quite some time for a few years. Um, you might get activated into, as well, into participating in networks of some sort, into participating in economic opportunities, and you can be very ambitious and driven for business. You can be almost like ruthless, like, and, and get really achieved in your business and getting more clients and following and so on. Uh, but they can be power struggles. It's Scorpio and this and this nakshatra Luna mansion in particular. It's um, razor sharp. It it does not the horse with blinkers. It goes after what it wants. So there might be clashes that you have to fight with uh, uh, friends, for example, on opinions, and you might fight with. They might be fighting or fighting with friends for a cause or fighting with like-minded people for a cause that you believe in, for a cause that really activates your passion and the warrior inside. Or this might be that, you know, the worst case scenario, power struggles with friends, but also it can mean a new group of friends that appears. It's a new cycle that are more Mars solar-like, driven, maybe bossy, but maybe visionary as well, full of ideas. And it's going to be a good idea not to try and do things alone over the next two years. First of all, Saturn, you know, Saturn wants you to be very cautious who you choose in your life. Uh, but again, it tells you work, because Saturn is work. And you, Saturn is you, you're involved with others. Third house is kind of social house. You're involved, but in a more, you know, deliberate way to do something, maybe when you get involved with them, to do something productive, constructive rather than waste your time, while Sun and Mars conjunction over the next two years is asking you to mobilize your forces with more people, not just to do it alone, like-minded, to find your tribe and to do something with your tribe about changing the world or changing your circumstances, following a goal of yours, you know. So that's how it can play out. Uh, yes, or you might be fighting, as I said, or you might be very involved in some kind of social what's happening in the world and fighting there and get very, you know, involved and active or really grab an opportunity that appears in social and economic way because the 11th house is the markets and Sun and Mars are proactive. You grab this opportunity and go after and do something wealth again. So you see there's both the third and the 11th. They're social, they're networking houses, they're connected to one self-made wealth, the other one to markets and putting yourself out there in the public eye, creating networks, forging Sun and Mars in the 11th house can make you very, what's that called, like um, initiative towards creating networks, towards finding clients, pushing through with your ideas, spreading information and so on, and that's the way to do it. As long as it's not like some public battle fight. <laughs> That's like, a, it had just this image. It's power struggle, public, very public one of some sort. That's another extreme possibility. Um, of course, Capricorn, let's not just scare you. For this month, it's not scary. There's a lot of good stuff. 
Venus will be in your 10th house only this month. So it's just a short influence, but it's in a beautiful state. No malefic influences, no bad influences. So they say when there is a benefic in the 10th house, everything of this house goes great. And that's your career. This is your career goals. This is relationships with authority figures, with parental figures, with anyone who is in authority. You can have good developments there, move uh, things moving forward in some way. Uh, with ease, maybe your public image will be a bit more improved. A great time to shop for clothes if you want to impress others in the public image or to meet up with people in power, authority, to reach out of the, to them or someone that is, you know, that you respect or has more experience or even a woman of kind to help you there. Uh, but yeah, if you have anything to work to do, this November is very good for it as well. It's smooth. It's going smoothly. So there you go, Capricorns. And if you'd like to hear your 2024 Capricorn horoscope, which is almost three hours, my best work every year, where I put in my heart and soul, more than 20,000 people have opted to, re to get those horoscopes um, since I started doing them. So it's obviously they're very, very loved and popular, and that's why I keep doing them. Otherwise, I would not, because it's two years, two, two months, that my uh, three hours every day it's crazy but i love doing them because they're useful to you and also my calendar for 2024 i write them every year 130 pages with all the unique influences that are happening for that year what will be happening in the world you know personally so you can plan your year accordingly planets moving direct what does it mean invisible becoming visible what does it mean jupiter moving into gemini what does it mean all of this I write them personally, my interpretations. Again, 30% off if you get it before November the 17th. Thank you.